Welcome back to another video and today we're gonna swap out our controls from the ZXCV to left and right arrows. So we do one, two, four, boom, boom. The doors have been opened. Let's go ahead, let's make this. Now, before I begin, I just want to mention that I actually scaled this actor back. So the uh, the BB bridge it has been scaled back to 111. So it's a default scaling because I'm going to be adding visual representation of these new controls. And if the actor is scaled up, these controls are also going to scale along with it. And it's just going to ruin, ruin the controls visually. So uh, what I did instead is I scaled this back to 111 and I went inside of the bridge blueprint and I actually made all the components individually bigger so the box extent has been made bigger the other box extent has been made bigger and the cubes have been made bigger and spread apart a little bit so uh, that's about it now for these new controls we have two options we could store these in the master blueprint but then in that case that means that all the child classes are also going to have these controls that are going to come along with these cones that you saw in the intro and all that stuff and then we're going to have to have even more extra code to disable it in the puzzles that we don't need so i'm opting to add these new controls only inside of my bp bridge puzzle blueprint but it's totally up to you how you decide to do this because it will work perfectly fine if you will add this in the master blueprint as well so we have the bb bridge let's add some visual representation for our controls so what i'm going to add is a bunch of not bones but cones i'm going to add a cone let's go in the viewport let's bring it back so somewhere over here somewhere over here and i'm going to scale this down to 0 0.5 0 0.5 and I know this is going to be underground, as you can see, it's underground. So I'm going to actually bring it out to make sure that it is on the ground like this. Now, of course, we can also move this, uh, move this individually inside of the level as well. As you can see, it's too low. So we could grab the cone and just bring it up. But I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm just going to simply do that inside of the puzzle. So we need twice more. 20 more there we go okay so we have cone number one so let's rename this to cone one then i'm gonna have cone two three and four i'm gonna spread these apart so this is at 300 so this is gonna be 200 100 zero okay like this now we need to know which control is the active one so which cone is the active one right now we could change meshes, we could scale these, rotate these, do all kinds of mad things with it. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply add a spotlight. So I'm going to illuminate or light up the cone that we have. So let me just move it over here like this, rotate this like this and move it up so that it actually lights up the cone and it's not inside of the cone. And let's go ahead and let's change the cone radius. So 15 will do the trick. Attenuation radius. We don't want to, we don't need it that high away, that far away. Here we go. And let's go ahead and let's change the color to something reddish. And it crashes. Okay, so my Unreal crashed. Let's see what did it save, what it didn't save. So we have the spotlight, but it's over here. Okay, let's try to do the same actions, but in a different order. Let's say we change the color first, since that's the thing that actually crashed our project. Seems to be good. Okay, so we're back in it. Let's move this back over here again. Rotate this. Move it up. And it lights the whole thing up. Nice. Let's try to change this to what it was. 15, I believe. And this was 120. There we go. Okay. Seems to be working now. Okay. So this is how we're going to identify which control is the active one. So basically, we're going to grab this spotlight and we're going to move this across like this. So my first active control by default is going to be this one. So it's going to be the previous Z key. So in this case, our zero uh, index control. So we're going to leave the spotlight on top of that. Now, here in the viewport, I think we're pretty much done. We don't need really anything else. What we do need is now to set up some controls. So I'm going to be using two keys, left and right arrows, to move the light left and right and change the active cone. So I'm going to have a keyboard. Let's select any event. Click on it. Click this and click left. 
and then we're gonna click right like this now our job is to really to change the indexes of which is the active one so I'm gonna add a new variable and I'm gonna call this active cone we're gonna make this into an integer and we're gonna be just changing numbers between 0 and 3 just like we did inside of our master on the key presses so we have 0 1 2 and 3 then that's basically exactly what we are going to be doing so we're gonna grab our active cone we're gonna set the value and to set it up we're gonna grab our current value so we're gonna get the active cone and so this is left so I'm gonna be doing minus 1 and I'm gonna make sure to clamp this so it doesn't go in the negative so it doesn't go too far away so it's always within the range so we have four controls so we're gonna go from 0 to 3 just like we did with the uh, ZXCV keys now for the right one we're just gonna copy and paste this and I'm simply gonna swap out this node with a plus one node like this value good okay so so far so good now the next thing would be to change the uh, so, so that the spotlight would move along as well and to do so I'm gonna add another variable and I'm gonna call this cones and we have two options so this is a static mesh component so we can either change this to a static mesh component or a scene component doesn't really matter both of these will do just fine I'm gonna be using scene component the negatives with the scene component is that we can't grab the static mesh component specific values so we're not gonna be really able to change the static meshes that easy and all that stuff so if you want to do some material changes or anything like that it would be better if you would change this to a static mesh component instead of a scene component in that case okay so we have our variable but I want to make sure that this is an array so I can hold multiple of these cones inside of this one variable so I'm gonna go ahead and set this like this then we want to go ahead and make an array so we have four cones and so we need four inputs and then we're gonna grab our cones get those and I need these the other way around like this and plug those in one two three Four. so make sure the order is correct so from the smallest to the biggest just like we have in the make array just like we have in the naming and just like we have over here so so far so good so now we have the cones and we're gonna need these cones to know the location of the light so our task now whenever we change the active control is to grab our spotlight and set its relative location in the actor so that is our task right now okay so we're gonna need to grab our cones so that we can get their locations and we want to get a copy from the active cone so we want to know which is the active cone and then we can get its relative location like this if we plug this in directly it's not gonna work because in that case because this is the location right so we could grab our cone one we could copy its location we could apply it to the spotlight and boom we can't see the red no more instead we want to have it higher up like this so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick with the Z value of the spotlight that it has right now so it's always gonna stay within the same Z value but it's only gonna change the X and Y values so that it can go like this so back inside of our event graph we're going to disconnect this we're going to split this we're also going to split the new location and so from the cone we want to use the x and y and then for the z we want to grab the spotlight itself and we want to get its relative location and then split it up and we can grab the z like so okay so far so good and then we also will need to do the same for the bottom but in this case I'm just gonna add a reroute and plug it in like this so th this part would run the same code because well it's identical code there's nothing different about it okay so 
Let's give it a shot, I guess. Let's hit play. Let's walk up so we can see one of those is red. If you use left and right, as you can see, it changes between them. Amazing. Now we actually need to make sure that something actually happens when we interact with this. So I'm going to have another keyboard event. In this case is going to be keyboard E key event like this. And on the E key press, we're going to go ahead and do our try rotate just like we did inside of our puzzle master on the ZX CV keys like this. And then we can provide our rotation index from the active cone integer value like this. So now we're going to be able to interact with the puzzle. But we still have another issue. And the issue is that our keys ZXCV are still functioning. And we want to somehow disable them inside of our child blueprint. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy these to over here. Without the events, you can add those inside of here individually as well, just like we did with these ones. I just simply copied these. And if we have the property that says override parent binding, it is going to disable those keys that we have in the parent, but only if we actually have something as a code uh, after we have pressed these. So at this point, it's not going to do anything. It's still going to function and it's going to be bad for us because we want to disable them. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the active cone and I'm going to set this value to be the same value basically. So kind of a pointless code. Now, if you have better suggestions for this, leave them down in the comment section down below. I'm not, I, I don't know any at this point. So it would be really great if somebody could explain to me how maybe I can disable these without having to run any extra code. Uh, but from what I tested, I, I, I just have to do that. Otherwise, those keys won't disable. So yeah, that's about it. So now if we would hit play, you will see that our XZCV keys no longer work. And if we grab our controls, so we had two, one, two, four. Boom, there we go. Our puzzle has been completed. So that's going to be it for this video. So thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And I see you in the next one.